Prayers of adoration, confession, and thanksgiving. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray for you sending us your son, Jesus. Help us that he shared this earthly life fully, its joys and sorrows, triumphs and defeats, happiness and pain. May we draw comfort from the knowledge that he is with us in good times and in bad times and he understands all our experiences praise to you O christ amazing god we truly can't take in the fullness of your love for us we need time to wait on you and let you into our sorrows and joys. Lord God, 
cause our hearts to sing as we wait patiently on you and witness your healing power, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our prayer of confession. Dear Lord, we come before you now, all of us knowing something of the tragedy of loss. It can hit in many different ways. There are times when we are sunk so deep in our sense of loss and isolation that we can't see it beyond it. Times when we don't want to let anyone else in, keeping everything bottled up inside, even our tears. Times when we are unable to reach out to others, even when they share the same grief. Forgive us. Grant us your peace and compassion. There are times when we try to rush ourselves or others through emotions of grief, not giving them much needed space. Forgive us, Lord. Grant us your peace and compassion. There are times when we can't see how anybody else's loss can possibly be as bad as ours. Forgive us, Lord. Grant us your peace and compassion. Amen. And a prayer of assurance of forgiveness. Lord God, you know every thought of our hearts and every breath we take, you know when we truly see the light and the error on our ways. You know when we are just totally overwhelmed. You know all this, yet you still love us and you have the power to free us from our sins. We bow our heads and accept your forgiveness, Lord. Amen. And our prayer of thanksgiving. We thank you that through you, Lord Jesus, we too have shared an experience like you. We will hear of bonds coming alive and remember, you are a God of restoration. Thank you that in our time of troubles, however long it takes, you have always been there for us. Thank you that you bring new life to us. And thank you most of all for the gift of eternal life. Amen. And now we are going to listen to our reading from Ezekiel chapter number 37, verse 1 to 14. The Valley of the Dry Bones The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me to and fro among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you, and make flesh come upon you, and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone, I looked and tendons 
and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord say, Come, breath from the four winds, and breathe into this lane, that they, will, they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them, they came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. Ezekiel was wise when God asked him to prophesy to the dry bones to live again. He answered, Lord, you know if they can live again. It is this miraculous act of resurrection and you can never imagine the truth of this imagery. I have selected the next hymn from my friends with their permission because God says the bones will know that I am the Lord and so this song would be a reflection of the wonders that God speaks Lord you sometimes indeed speak in wonder Speaking wonders, unmistakable and clear, mighty signs that show your presence, overcoming doubt and fear. Oh Lord, you sometimes speak in wonders.
The name Ezekiel means God is strong or God strengthens. Even in the face of death, Israel's hope in the future was grounded in the authority of Yahweh. The reading we had is a powerful scripture to see how God works and see his mighty works. Seeing and hearing what God had done allows us to fully encounter what God can do and experience also his glory and know God intimately. The story of Ezekiel chapter number 37 contains a vision of the resurrection of dry bones, widely known as the vision of the valley of dry bones, in which Ezekiel at last assures the captives in Babylon that they will return from exile. This must have been what God meant by breathing freshness to make the bones live again. Ezekiel described his symbolic vision of the resurrection of dry bones. The multiple meanings of this vision includes a picture of the resurrection of the dead as well as the restoration of the house of Israel. God took Ezekiel and he showed him the valley that was filled with dry bones. They were scattered all around and there was no life in them. God spoke to Ezekiel and he asked him, Can these bones live again? Well, Ezekiel didn't know what to say. But very cleverly, he said, Oh Lord! Only you know the answer to that. Then God spoke to Ezekiel and said, Speak to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Look, I'm going to put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. So Ezekiel spoke the message just as God told him. And he spoke. And there was a rattling noise across the valley. And the bones came together and formed complete full skeletons. The muscles and flesh formed over the bones. And the skin covered their bodies. Finally, the winds came and they filled the bodies with breath and they came alive. Ezekiel was faithful. He was obedient and God recognized that in him, he could trust him to carry out his message to Israel. This is what God is asking of us today, that we listen and do what he's asking us to do. The spirit of the Lord lives within us, but it takes faith and hope to trust what God is saying to us, not only today, but every day. We would all not believe that those very dry bones would come back to life. No way, how? But through Ezekiel, we learn that the spiritual is just as important as the physical. God's power and plan for his people surpasses the physical limitations of our life on earth. And we will make things new once again. When we start to feel the dry bones in our lives, taking over with depression, helplessness, hopelessness, bitterness, or any other negative feelings, we have to make a choice not to claim them and hold on to them. We have to learn to live 
No matter what trouble comes into our lives to destroy our comfort zone because of our injured bones. Life can torment us sometimes and life can change drastically. But today, when we imagine the miraculous dead dry bones coming back to life, let us keep hope alive my friends bones support your body allow you to move they protect your brain your heart and other organs from injuries bones are also said to be living and growing tissues and it is said they are made mostly of two materials collagen a protein that provides soft framework and calcium, a mineral that adds strength and hardness. I remember very well, we were six children, breastfeeding only for three months. And poor us, our nails keep breaking, our bones are sometimes achy because we didn't have maybe enough calcium. I don't know about you, but I just want to tell you, be encouraged, life has been breathed back to us. Revival is here. Cheer up. And God is saying, sometimes it's hard to think that anything good can happen. That everything is like as it was in the valley of the dry bones. Just as God brought life to the valley of dry bones with the breath of his Holy Spirit, God can make bad things better in our lives too and he will when we trust him for it that is what the gospel of christ is all about let us live in hope and have trust in the lord obey his commandments keep them and be there for one another Let us pray. Heavenly Father, sometimes we face hard things and life seems hopeless. Help us to remember the lesson of the dry bones. If you can make dry bones live again, you can make something good out of the hard things in our life. God of comfort and peace, we place in your tender care those who mourn the death of a loved one and there they are passing has been risen or for those to whom it is a time of anniversary and for those whom the pain never seems to get any better. May you love, strengthen and support them. Comfort those who mourn and fill them with your peace. God of yesterday and today, we pray for those who are devastated by their current situations. We remember the people of cities in Ukraine that have been destroyed in the war there. The people of Syria and Turkey who lost homes and livelihoods in the recent earthquake those who have lost jobs because of their current economic situations. May your wisdom encourage and guide them. God of power and love, we hold before you our planet. You are at the heart of creation and we are destroying the beautiful world that you have made. Give strength and wisdom to those offering advice and to those making decisions concerning changes that are happening in our planet. May our actions be in time to preserve what you have created. Your grace is eternal and knows no ending. 
We pray for those who have lost hope as a result of the cost of living crisis. Those who are fearful of what the future holds. Those who do not know how they will pay for food or heating. We pray for those awaiting test results or are worried that they will receive bad news and do not know how they will cope. May the promise of new life enable everyone to face tomorrow. May your love bring comfort and praise, strength and peace to all those who need it for whatever reason. In silence, we name before you any about whom we are specially concerned at this time. Hear our prayer, gracious God, for we offer it in the name of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and for his sake. Amen. Lord, be with our journey of life as we travel with you in the coming days. May we share your love and compassion with those we meet. Transform us and transform them with your life-giving love. Amen. Go in peace to serve and love the Lord. And I do wish you a blessed week. Thank you for joining us.
God bless you. Okay.